Welcome to the SUNY Potsdam Library's tutorial on search strategies. This video will explain a number of methods you can use when doing research to refine your search results, maximizing the relevancy of the items you find, and saving you time and effort in the bargain. Research can be a frustrating and time-consuming process. Whether you're searching the library's databases, Google Scholar, or just Google itself, it's really easy to turn up thousands of search results. But that can be overwhelming. It's much harder, though, to reach a manageable number of the most relevant results, say 25 or 50, that you can actually sort through to figure out which ones are best. Always remember, you don't just want to find any articles or to pick the first ones that you come across. You want to find the best articles, ones that are the most relevant for your research project. And these search strategies can help you accomplish that. The first search strategy we'll look at is Boolean searching. Boolean searching may sound complicated, but it really couldn't be easier. It's simply using three terms, and, or, not. When you put one of those between two or more items in a database search you're conducting, they do exactly what it sounds like they'll do. And will narrow your search. When you put AND between two search terms, both of those terms must be present in an item for the database to include it in your returns. So for this example, if you search for Robin and Batman, the database will throw out every article that only mentions Batman and every article that only mentions Robin, and will just give you articles that mention both of them. You can use an AND search to refine your results. Conduct an initial search for your main term, but then begin adding additional terms in order to refine the results, narrowing down that list of articles until you get the ones that are most relevant for your research. OR does the opposite. It broadens your search. When you put OR between two search terms, the database will return every article that includes either one. So, if you conduct a search for Robin or Batman, the database will give you everything that only mentions Batman, everything that mentions Batman and Robin, and everything that only mentions Robin. So you'll get the comic book character, but also the bird, Robins, Robin Williams, Monty Python's Brave Sir Robin, the Brooklyn Robins baseball team, and anything else named Robin. You can conduct an OR search when you're not getting enough results. It's often worthwhile to think of synonyms or similar terms to the one you're searching, because what you might be thinking of might not be what someone else called it in an article. For instance, if you search for stress, you could expand your results by searching stress or anxiety in order to get more returns. Finally, not once again narrows your search. When you put not between two search terms, the database will only give you articles that include the first term when the second term is not there. So if you search Robin, not Batman, the database will throw out all articles that mention Batman and all articles that mention Batman and Robin, and will only give you articles that have Robin, but no Batman. You might want to do a not search if your results are being cluttered by irrelevant articles. Say you're doing research on the bird, Robins, but you keep getting articles about comic books. Do a Robin not Batman search and all those Batman articles will be gone. Many databases have Boolean search terms built right in, as you can see in this example. So all you need to do is pick the appropriate one from the drop-down menu. And Boolean terms will work in Google, Google Scholar, and other internet search engines too. You just need to be sure to capitalize the entire word, and, or, not, which will tell the search engine that you're doing a Boolean search. Boolean searching is one of the simplest yet most powerful search strategies available to us, but there are others that you can use too. You're probably already familiar with the first of these from a lifetime of Googling, using quotation marks. Placing words in quotation marks creates an exact phrase, so the database, or the search engine, 
will only give you results that include those exact words in that exact order. For example, if you search New York Jets, sure, most of your results will be for the football team, but it's possible that you'll get an article about, say, York, Pennsylvania opening a new airport where Jets land. New York and Jets are all in there. But put it in quotes and you'll just get returns about the New York Jets. Another more complicated search strategy is using parentheses. Parentheses create an order of operation for your search, which works just like parentheses in math. In math, you have to do the functions inside the parentheses before doing what's outside them. And a search works the same way. The database will first conduct a search for items inside the parentheses and will then look inside just that bucket of results for additional search instructions that are outside them. Going back to our example about robins, say you're researching the bird. So you do a search for Robin, not Batman. And that gets rid of all the comic book results, but you're still getting results for Robin Williams, Robin Wright, and a bunch of other Robins. In that case, you could put your initial Robin, not Batman search inside parentheses and then add and bird outside them. The database will first do the Robin, not Batman search and will then look within those results for any mention of the term bird and then it'll only give you those results in your returns. Yes, it's a little complicated, but it also results in a very refined search, which is what you're looking for. And you can stack parentheses too, conducting multiple complex searches, which can save you a lot of time and effort sorting through a bunch of irrelevant articles. For example, if you want to search for movies about World War I, there are a lot of different terms that you might need to sort through. So you can conduct a search for synonyms of movie in one set of parentheses, film or movie or motion picture, and then another search for synonyms of World War I in another set of parentheses, World War I or First World War or Great War, and connect the two sets of parentheses with a Boolean AND. And this will do a bunch of searches all at once, saving you the time and effort of conducting a lot of different searches, combining all of those terms in different ways. Lastly, we have truncation, which is sometimes referred to as a wildcard search. Truncation will only work in databases, not in Google or other search engines, and it won't always be relevant to every search you do. But when it is, it's very, very useful. Truncation involves taking the start of a word and placing an asterisk immediately after it. The database will then conduct a search for every word that starts with that root. A great example of when this is useful is the term educat with an asterisk after it. If you conduct a search like this, you'll get results for everything that starts like that. So educate, education, educator, educated, and so on. This can save you a lot of time because it's conducting four or more searches at once rather than you having to do each of these searches individually. So those are some search strategies to help you streamline your research and maximize your time. Remember, you're always looking for the best results possible and becoming proficient with these search strategies can ensure that you get the most relevant results, which in turn will only help to improve the quality of your research projects.